Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have eight hearings in a case where a mother had motioned the court for a child support modification back in 2019 and then has refused to participate in discovery. Dad's lawyer motions for contempt after getting nowhere for years, all while dealing with mom's unhinged rants, including accusing her of deviant acts against her child, claims that she had her evicted, and so much more. She even made 22 bar complaints against her. Let's see what the judge is going to do. Presenting Ms. Fowler and also his uh, related motion for fees. And then uh, Ms. Cotto filed a motion related to, to communication. Uh, so I'll, let me touch base with Ms. Ms. Fowler. Ms. Fowler, did you receive a copy of Ms. Cotto's motions, motion? Your Honor, I did not. And I will also say that since I was represented, the court will not allow me to file anything until I am not represented. Okay. Mr. Antagnosti, did you receive a copy of Ms. Cotto's motion? Uh, yes, I did, Your Honor. And uh, we did forward that to, to our client via email. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So, Mr. Antagnosti, I, I have reviewed your, your motion to withdraw. I note that the court appointed you uh, some time ago, and you've indicated that there's a conflict under several different, or at least two different rules of the rules of professional conduct. Um, and anything else you want to add to your, to your motion? Uh, no, Your Honor. Um, All right. Ms. Feller, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just had a, a comment with regards to um, my client's address. I, she's raising that as an issue. Uh, and pursuant to the Rule uh, 71, uh, if, uh, if when an attorney withdraws, if the client doesn't want their address disclosed, then documents can be served through the court. That's an option. But it's my understanding my client does not want to give her address out to uh, Ms. Kudo. Um, and Ms. Kudo, do you have any 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 objection to Mr. Antagnosti's motions? Uh, no, Your Honor, I do not. Okay. And Ms. Fowler, um, Mr. Antagnosti raised the issue of the address. Uh, do you want to touch base on that or do you want to state anything about that? Yes, Your Honor. The reason is because I have filed all of Ms. Kudo's discovery requests habitually in the court proceedings, and she took my address information sought out my landlord and then represented her to evict me, which harmed her client as well, because he's responsible for housing and, you know, shelter, food and basic needs for our child, which he hasn't seen her in five years. They've turned down every offer I've made to even see her. I've, I've been trying to work this out. I've made multiple offers to work all these issues out. They've refused every single time and wasted so much taxpayer resources with crazy motions that I don't even know what to do. So I am afraid of giving her any updated information because she abuses it. Okay. There's um in the rules that Mr. Anagnosti referenced, which is uh, civil rule 71 C1, it says if the address, your address is omitted, the notice must contain a statement after the attorney withdraws and so long as the address of the withdrawing attorney's client remains undisclosed and no new attorney is substituted, the client may be served by leaving papers with the clerk of the court pursuant to Rule 5B1. So if you don't want that your address to be known, then, then the, your other option is to you can be served by people can leave papers at the, the clerk's office and they'd have to follow the rules under 5B1. And that means that there'd be kind of a, a duty or obligation upon you to check with some regularity with the court clerk for papers that have been filed wow. because otherwise if you don't then you've been deemed to have uh, been served so that's well, the one option that we can pursue if you're interested in doing that your option or your honor i do have a confidential address with the secretary of treasury and i am uh putting a notice to relocate with my children due to work i'm moving to minnesota and so that's not really going to be an option because I'm not even going to be able to have proceedings in this court anymore. I, I, I cap, I'm a federal employee. I have to leave with my children. I have to go where they tell me to. You said that you can't be involved in this proceedings because you're moving. Uh, I'm saying that the proceedings are going to have to continue where the children and I are residing because obviously there's no way that I'm going to be able to fly back to Cowlitz County um, and do proceedings when I'm working. Well, that'll be a, a, a motion for a different day as far as any change of change of uh, jurisdiction. So until that time, the, this court holds jurisdiction over the matter. So Mr. Adagnostu's uh, motion is well taken. I'll allow him to withdraw. 
Um, I've signed that order that Mr. Adek Nastu provided, so he, he has withdrawn officially. Um, and then also I signed off on the order on the motion for attorney fees for the $1,342.50 to be paid to Mr. Adek Nastu. You made mention, Mr. Adek Nastu, of possibly uh, including additional fees for today, or did that in include the fees for today? Uh, that did not include uh, the, the fees for today. Um, uh, I, at this point, I, I would just like to have this matter kind of my involvement concluded, so I, I won't pursue additional fees. Okay, I, I've signed off. I've signed off on, on both those orders. Your um, Honor. Yes, and let's take up Ms. here from Ms. Cotto. Thank you, Your Honor. I think my um, affidavit or my information to the court pretty much spells out the problem I've got. Um, Ms. Uh, Fowler continually abuses the email information, which I um, I've basically outlined to the court as far as uh, the, the midnight um, and late, late night, numerous emails. So emails is not, is not an option. Um, I think that serving it to the clerk of the court may be the only option since, and I can tell the court that I have, I think the court is aware of, of the ongoing issue with Ms. Fowler if the court reviewed the file. Um, I didn't do anything unethical, um, I, but that's not before the court. Um, I just need a very clear direction on where I can serve Ms. Fowler with documents because we do have a motion to compel in a couple of weeks because I can't get discovery. Uh, that's been noted. I did serve Mr. Anagnostu. Um, I can't serve Ms. Fowler by email because she's blocked. Okay. All right. So let me touch base with uh, Ms. Fowler. Ms. Fowler, uh, first off, as far as the how would you like to be a served serve documents? Uh, Your Honor, as I stated, um, for victims of domestic violence, they, the state has set up a confidential address system for court documents and stuff to be sent to. And I do have one of those because I am a victim of domestic violence. So I would request that the documents be sent through the Department of Treasury's uh, confidential address system. And that is how I, I will be able to receive these documents. And then moving forward, I am filing a uh, request of recusal of counsel and then a change of venue as well due to the fact that I am relocating with my children and I will file appropriate paperwork re in regards to that matter as well. Okay, thank you. Ms. Cotto, as far as the thank confidential you. address program, do you have? I, I don't believe that that's accurate and I don't believe that Ms. Fowler is actually part of that. Um, we've got a lot of misinformation that's been given to the court. I would just ask that I be able to serve it on the clerk of, or give it to the clerk of the court. Um, Ms. Fowler has a way of um, basically spinning things that I don't think are, I think are a misrepresentation. She hasn't provided any documentation to show that she's part of this witness protection, even though she's alleged it. She's also mentioning two children, which I'm only aware of one. So um I would just ask to be able to serve it on the clerk of the court. This situation has been brought about by Ms. Fowler continually um, harassing me, uh, filing bar complaints against the three prior councils. It, she's really kind of created the situation. So I think that it would be most appropriate that the court uh, allow me to serve clerk of the court. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Fowler, how, how, what, what indication in the court file do I have that you're uh, part of the confidential address program? Your Honor, at the beginning of my proceedings, when I was pro se, um, I was going through a domestic violence shelter. And I do believe that the information for that confidential address um, through the Department of Treasury was provided. Uh, as far as Ms. Cotto's allegations, they're rapidly false. I did, there's no bar complaints against my previous counsel. Um, and it is illegal for her to continue this at course of action with me for making a bar complaint against her because I did and I did in good faith and I have a lot of um, a compilation of the last over four years of her representation of why I did that and it shouldn't be a matter before the court nor in my family law case other than for a motion to recuse and that's not before the court today. All right, so Ms. Feller, I'm looking looking through the case file, um, looking under a confidential sealed documents, and I'm not seeing anything that uh, purports to be an indication that, of involvement in uh, the in an address confidentiality program. 
So without, without that in the court file, um, what, what can you point me to that shows me that you're involved in that program? Uh, because th- we're talking about the issue of service, how you can be served with papers, which is super important. So you can uh, be aware of what's happening in the case. So what, what can you point to me in the case file that shows that you're part of that program? My domestic violence counselor was the one who did the majority of the assisting with paperwork when I began. When do you think she filed that? When do you think she um, filed that? That would have been done in the very beginning. Uh-huh. But I will not waste court time today either because I know that you guys have other pressing matters to attend to. So uh, for for temporary, I'm willing to accept papers through the court, but it, I, I will let the court know that it's going to be very hard for me to habitually call in to the court because I'm not, there's a lot of times I'm out of state and I will do my best to make sure that I'm keeping up with the court, but I feel that it also, um, it, it gives Miss Cotto a way to file papers without me knowing. Okay. All right. So as far as the, the address or where, where Ms. Fowler can be served documents, uh, there's, there's no indication in the case, in the case file that Ms. Fowler is part of the address confidentiality program. She's indicated that um, she's not willing to provide an address to Ms. Cotto. So there is a section as pointed out by Mr. Anagnostu that allows for service upon the court of the clerk. Uh, so that's where that will occur and that will remain in, in effect. Yeah, the ball service can be effectuated upon Ms. Fowler by serving the court clerk with those documents um, until further order of this court. I can prepare an order um, and serve a proposed order on Ms. Fowler. We're actually going to be before the court on the, uh, I believe in two weeks, and we can present it at that time if Ms. Fowler doesn't agree. Okay. Then there, there is a, uh, a related um, motion related to Ms. Fowler serving Ms. Cotto. There is a request, Ms. Fowler, that you serve Ms. Cotto either only by U.S. mail system or via email uh, during working hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30, and only two times per day within a 24-hour period. Uh, do you have any objections Excuse to me, Your Honor. Excuse oh, me, Your Honor. I'd like to modify that because okay. there's been abuse since that was, mm-hmm. since that was uh, presented, and it was an ongoing issue. So I would just ask that I be served by USPS. We do have an old order for that, but I would like an ongoing order that I be served by USPS. Okay. All right, so it sounds like the motion has been modified or reduced in scope. So Ms. Fowler, that Ms. Cotto is asking that if you if you serve her any documents, she's requesting that you serve her through the United States mail system. Do you have any uh, concerns or objections to that? I have no objection to that other than generally I have a process server serve paperwork to her office. That way that there are a process server that can uh make witness to the service because previously I sent things through certified mail and I had issues with them locking the doors and I have full documentation of that. So generally I have a process server or send things through us mail. Okay. All right. All right. So it sounds like there's no objection on, on Ms. Um, Fowler's behalf that uh, she uses only uh, United States Postal Service uh, to serve documents to Ms. Cotto. And that if she wants to hire a process server, she can obviously do that. So, okay. so I'll, grant the, I'll grant the motion brought by Ms. Cotto. Also on May 2nd review, uh, proposed orders related to uh, Ms. Cotto's motions today. So uh, any further items on your end, Mr. Anagnostu? Uh, no, Your Honor. Thank okay. you. Ms. Cotto, any f- further items on your end? No, I don't believe so. Thank you. And Ms. Feller, any further items related to the motions today? Mr. No. Moment. Uh, let's next take the um, Jolene Fowler and Corey Reed matter, which is cause 18-3672-08. Uh, this is on for um, issues related to compelling discovery. I'll double check to see if parties are present. Uh, Jolene Fowler, are you here today? And Ms. Fowler, if you are here today, uh, please unmute and state your name. I'm not seeing that she's in the Zoom room. I typed her name. Uh, I don't see her and she's not responding. And Ms. Cotto, are you present? I am, Your Honor. Okay. And I believe this is uh, Mr. Reed's motion to compel discovery. 
related to some ongoing efforts. Um, it, we were last here, let's see, I'm gonna pull up my Odyssey, it's going a little slow. We, we weren't too, too long ago oh, talking about a uh, presentation of an order related to service and the like. And I believe this issue was raised, but wasn't, was not fully addressed. And we set it, set it over to, to address today. Is, is that your that's, recollection, Ms. Cotto? That's uh, from my notes from Mr. Ammons, because I was in another hearing and that's correct, um, was that the, the court entered the order on, um, from the, from, I guess a hearing a couple of weeks ago, but did not address any anything regards to the motion to compel. I have not submitted an order because a proposed order because uh, one doesn't always know what the court's going to order on these matters. Right. So looking back at the minutes from May 9th when our last hearing uh, we had, uh, Mr. Ammons was present uh, in in place of Ms. Cotto and Ms. Fowler was present, and we talked about signing off on the order and that I did. And then we also set the matter over to today at nine o'clock in the morning, she was present. Um, and I'm not sure why she's not here today. I was gonna ask Ms. Cote if you had any contact from Ms. Fowler, but I understand there's probably not gonna be much direct contact via phone. There, there, is been, there is no contact between myself and Ms. Fowler. She used to contact me only through USPS and private process server. Right. So you filed a motion to compel back on April 10th, laying out the specific bases or different uh, foundations for that. Did, and I'm just looking at to see if there was a, a res responsive pleading filed by Ms. Fowler. I, I don't recall seeing one. Did you re did you receive uh, any response to your motion? No. I and, and one of the things that's happened in this particular case is I received a number of documents that are not in Odyssey. And I never received anything that was an odyssey. Um, the, the documents I have received are not under the penalty of perjury, not, you know, they're data, but there's no place of, of, of uh, signature. I don't think that in itself is, is a problem. Um, the latest one, I did get something it says under penalty of perjury, but I don't believe that's properly before the court. So I, I haven't gotten a, a response that's filed with the court is, Think where I'm at. This has been kind of an ongoing issue. Okay. Um, so, in, in response to the motion to compel, I see on April 28th, Ms. Fowler filed a response to defendants' motions, and she says that she denies defendants' motions to compel and uh, asks for an award of attorney fees for filing bar complaints, an order limiting abuse of litigation, a CR 11 sanction, and other relief that might be imposed. On that same day, she filed the 25 page uh, declaration. Well, there's attachments, uh, basically th two, two to three pages. Uh, she indicates that, um, she indicates she has some concerns about providing documentation related to her social security number. She said that interrogatory interrogatories have been filed with the court. She said that she's provided everything. Um, and she said that they've had um, a 26I conference and then she's filing them again, the 20, uh, the interrogatory answers. Um, so she goes on to talk about that and talks about other 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 information. Then, um, and that's not under the penalty of perjury. There is this one document that is under the penalty of perjury. It said um, it's about ex parte communications that she has some concerns about. And then there is a, an amended declaration um, where she talks about the FBI and the, the C DOJ and other things and concerned about her, her information. And then she talks a little bit about some 26I conferences on page three. She said, again, just basically reiterate what she said before in her earlier declaration that she's provided everything. Um, and then uh, I just wanna make sure I'm just covering everything that she submitted. I don't think that's under the penalty of perjury, Your Honor. I agree, I agree. All right, um, and so, so those those documents have been filed, and then I just want to just check with Ms. Cotto with the April twenty eighth declaration that was submitted that had some uh, has a different some exhibits associated with it. Um, 
it's a criminal history of Ms. Fowler. There's a, a bar complaint. There's a, a declaration of Mr. Ammon's assistant. Then there's respondent's yeah. first request for discovery information from the petitioner. Um, so there, there are some answers provided there on those. Um, but your position is that she submitted those, but those are, are incomplete. Well, Your Honor, the first, I haven't seen those. They have never been served on me. Um, and they are not, I don't know if they're complete because the those particular documents have not been submitted. Um, and there's nothing signed under the penalty of perjury. There's significant concerns I have in regards to getting information. Uh, I'm not going to go through and answer every single allegation Ms. Um, Fowler makes, but I can tell the court I have had not had any ex parte communication with any judicial officer, especially in this case, given the 22 bar complaints that have been made, um, all of them being unfounded. Um, yeah, I'm, I I'm, not, I'm not so I'm not so concerned okay. about that. I'm, I'm more concerned just about um, the, the, the the discovery issues since we're here for a motion to to, to compel. Never seen anything and never received anything. Haven't received. Um, we've done the CR 26 I as required. I've done it several times with all the different attorneys. Mm -hmm. We did the last one with Mr. Ann Ignastu, who was her last attorney. Um, the previous CR 26 I was in regards to Ms. Winkles asking for information from me. We didn't get a chance to um, discuss the information coming from Ms. Winkles. So that's why in my responsive declaration, usually they're much shorter in motion to compels, kind of explaining what had happened. Um, I'm still not received anything. Nothing's been signed. Nothing's been given to my office, no documents. Um, I can tell the court that any of that information doesn't leave my office. It's uh, protected and given allegations, my client won't even get a copy. I will go over some of the information pertinent to the case, but we can't proceed without it. And everything I'm asking for is relevant to completing this particular case. It is a child support modification. I'm asking for bank records. Those won't leave my office. Um, if the court orders me to not um, show my client her social security number. I don't have a problem doing that. Uh, she actually filed that her social security number in another document uh, previous in that. And I have not shared that with my client. I'm just asking the court for an order to compel, an order compelling her to provide my office with not only the discovery, but the attachments that um, I should have fees. Not I'm not asking for fees because of bar complaints. I ask, I'm asking for fees because I've had to come back repeatedly. I've repeatedly given her a lot of latitude because she's represented herself to give me the information. She's not providing it. All right. Thank you. I, I did review. It looks like the discovery request was initially made in October of 2019. That was served upon Ms. Fowler. In 2021, there were uh, at least four attempts to set a 26-hour with uh, Ms. Fowler's then attorney, Ms. Ms. Lynn. Uh, Ms. Um, Cotto documents or indicates that there was another attorney that uh, there were efforts to get the discovery uh, that were unsuccessful. And then the most recent one, 26I to, to, with Mr. Anagnostu, uh, there was a uh, 26I that occurred on February 23rd, and there was a, an agreed date on which those responses would be filed by March 23rd. Uh, as of April 8th, nothing had been submitted. April 10th, the motion to compel was filed. There is a declaration submitted by Ms. Fowler on the 28th. Um, it's not under the penalty of perjury. It uh, purports to provide uh, some emails. Um, it has a, looks like a billing system uh, from an attorney. There's an affirmation of Ms. Cota that's submitted. Then there's a police, uh, pardon me, uh, criminal history check of Ms. Fowler. And then there are also, uh, there's a uh, response from Ms. Foster related to, uh, to sent to the Bar Association on behalf of Ms. Cotto. There's a declaration from Ms. Specht, who's a legal assistant to Mr. Ammons. And then there's uh, pages 18 through 25 are, are uh, responses to the interrogatories. 
Um, and that's where Ms. Cotto um, indicated that she has not received those. And they seem, you know, for example, under interrogatory number 1.3, basically where, where, they've, where she's lived in the past, um, and also the monthly rent, address, phone number, landlord, addresses of other residences, uh, whether it's a rental or lease agreement and the like. And she says in response to those, she says all filed in court and attached. Um, so that seems to be incomplete because there's uh, no attachments that relate to that. And there's also... There's incomplete answers related to employment periods. Um, so there's there's some incomplete, notwithstanding that there's a submission, uh, but it's 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 incomplete um, and it's not dated as as to when she signed the, the responses to that. Ms. Fowler was here at the last hearing on May 9th. I'm not sure why she's not here today. This has been dragging on a very long time since October of 2019 as far as discovery. Uh, so I'm going to grant the a motion to compel in order that all answers be uh, su submitted and completed uh, fully and appropriately uh, no later than uh, June 13th at 9 a.m. Um, where the, they need to be submitted at that time. I am ordering attorney fees of $500. This case has gone on for a very long time. I'm not sure if Ms. Fowler uh, was possibly injured or you know is unable to make it here today or what have you uh, we can address that if she comes forward with with uh, concerns about today's hearing um, so with that then Ms. Cotto I, I anticipate you'd be submitting um, a, an order uh, to compelling and granting the relief that was requested in your motion along with the $500 of attorney fees and to, to provide complete answers and provide documents as requested. And with the language that if there's a failure to do so, there's a, a distinct possibility of striking of pleadings. Okay, so is the court saying as far as uh, failure to comply with the dates that further sanctions may be considered or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to put this on for presentation. I can also tell the court as an office of the court, I did not receive any messages even through the process server who showed up yesterday that, that she was not going to be here. So, okay. Okay. So can we put this on for a presentation in front of your honor? We can, we can set it to, I mean, we could, we could set it for two dates proposed. Uh, one would be uh, May 30th or the other would be, we could just set it on the 13th of June. Um, I'd like to get the order done before the 13th. So I'd like to do the 30th for the presentation of the order and then. Um, Compliance I, review on the 16th. Right. Or 13th, pardon me. Let's do that. Yeah. So, All so right, my so, dates are May 30th and June the 13th. Yeah, so correct? Okay. Yes, May 30th and 9 a.m. for presentation of today's order of compelling uh, discovery. Yeah. And June 13th, Tuesday will be a review to see if she's complied with uh, the court's order. Okay. All right. Those were the only issues then before the court. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. That'll conclude uh, the Fowler Reed matter. Uh, do we have Jolene Fowler or Corey Reed? I, I'm here on behalf of uh, Mr. Reed, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Do we have Jolene Fowler? I'm not hearing any response and it looks like the state's involved, but I, I don't know that they're involved in this particular matter. So Ms. Cotto, uh, again, uh, I don't know if it, it sounds like this is something that needs to be covered by Judge Evans. Does that sound yes. correct? Yes. Yes. So I just would ask it, that it go over to June 6th. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, I will go ahead and set that matter over to June 6th. Let's next move to the Fowler and Reed matter. This is cause number 183672-08, uh, Jolene Fowler and Corey Reed. Ms. Mr. Reed is represented by Ms. Cotto. And I believe that uh, Ms. Looney is uh, representing the state and she's on the line. And I see Ms. Cotto is on the line. And I'll double check to see if Jolene Fowler, Jolene Fowler, are you on the line today? 
Yes, Your Honor. All right, there you are, Ms. Feller, welcome. All right, so we're on today for a review of compliance with an order to compel. Uh, the hearing was held on, on May 16th related to discovery answers uh, that they needed to be produced. Uh, and, and today we'd review it to see if they had been uh, supplied. And we're gonna review the completeness and the sufficiency of those answers. And so we'll hear first from, from Ms. Cotto and then I'll hear please from Ms. Fowler. I have not received anything, Your Honor. Okay. All right. And then Ms. Ms. Fowler, did you supply any updated information uh, for uh, discovery purposes to Ms. Cotto and Cotto's office? Uh, Your Honor, Ms. Cotto has proceeded in these actions and did not serve the state. However, they did provide all of my income information as the state has all of my income information. Uh, so that is available to the court. I, however, um, have noted uh, objections to providing any further information as Ms. Cotto is very adamant about wanting my address. Um, I did get the address confidentiality program paperwork uh, done yesterday, um, and that is being sent back with a card for me. Um, I plan on filing an appeal on the motion to compel because this has been going on for five years, and the only uh, thing that has been done for my child in the last five years in these proceedings are wicked deviant acts. And I can't continue to allow it. I'm tired of the abuse. And it's really emotional for me to see my daughter go through so much horrible things at the hands of Miss Cotto and the defendant, and I am doing what I can to protect my daughter. So I absolutely cannot provide any information on housing after Miss Cotto shut off my daughter's water with us in the home and then sought me out to evict me from a home I had no possession. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. So, so there the order from, or the order from the discovery uh, hearing, the motion to compel from May sixteenth required you to produce uh, answers, complete answers uh, to those discovery requests. And from what you what you said, Ms. Fowler, it sounds like you you have not uh, supplied anything additional since that order has been uh, submitted. Is that is that accurate? Yes, Your Honor, it is because there's a, a motion to appeal um, going in for that. Sure, that doesn't that doesn't tie the, the court's hands at this point. You can certainly any party can file an appeal, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I was we were on the same page that I understood you correctly. So, thank you for for confirming that. So, uh, with that response, Ms. Cotto. Thank you, Your Honor. So, so the issue um, it, it isn't just an address. I mean, I understand that. Um, uh, there's, if there's a confidential address, then I would have something to mail things to. But the problem being is, um, I haven't received other documentation that I requested. In particular, um, Ms. Fowler is the protective payee for the child and social security, and there's a social security payment. I need all of that information. Um, and, Income information is not the only thing that was requested. So there was a number of other things. And if Ms. Fowler doesn't want to give her address, which she's refused to give, there's a, a ton of other information I've requested that is necessary for us to move forward. Um, I just got Ms. Looney's stuff. I will be responding because there's misinformation and maybe the state can get some of this information, but income information is, all, is not all that's required here. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I'm I'm heartened to hear as far as the address confidentiality program that Ms. Fowler, you're taking steps to to move that forward. Um, that that would I think help in, in large part as far as communication and service of documents. The, the at least there could be an address provided to all parties. And I, I say that because the clerk's office has indicated that the system that we have uh, right now is uh, on a continuing basis really isn't workable. Where 
uh, Ms. Fowler would present herself at the clerk's office and retrieve papers, and that would be deemed service. Uh, that's just, it'll, it, it, it works in a pinch, but in the long run, it's not. So I'm happy to hear about the address confidentiality program. So Ms. Fowler, once you've got that new address for that program, if you could please uh, get that set up and, and submit it to the, the court so we can, uh, so, you know, all parties know where to serve documents and the like. So I appreciate your help with that. So at this point, um, it sounds like uh, Ms. Looney has some, uh, just give her the floor if she has any anything you'd like to add or, or, or state. Nothing to add, Your Honor. Um, we just filed the income information that's available to the state with some post worksheets. Okay. And I did receive it, I believe, yesterday or the day before, but I did uh, receive it. And as the court's aware, I was in court yesterday, so I was not able to get hold of Ms. Looney, but... Um, one thing I would like the court to address is where do I serve Ms. Fowler until I get this address? Because throughout this process, Ms. Fowler makes claims that she's got this confidentiality or she's part of this program and then nothing. I need to know where to serve her. Um, and if she can on the record give an address, even if she doesn't want to give her own address, if she can give me some location to serve her uh, because I have some other documents to send her. Ms. Fowler, do you want to comment on that? Uh, Your Honor, I think uh, one of the big issues here, honestly, this case could have been resolved five years ago if it weren't for um, the deviant acts that Ms. Cotto's done. And honestly, I think moving forward, filing a recusal um, so that she can no longer seek me out uh, with other parties and do deviant acts against my child would absolutely resolve these issues quickly. Um, because if we were here for child support, this, could, this would have been resolved five years ago. So we're kind of, we're talking about address. We're, so I just need you to focus on, on that. As far so, as the yeah, go ahead. My address, uh, the address confidentiality uh, program, I was notified it takes two days for them to send me a card. So within the next two days, I should have my card with my PMB number um, to provide uh, with the state department um, for mailing. Okay. So, so, so it sounds like that's in progress. And so there's an order from May 9th. Uh, the order from May 9th uh, deals with the issue of service until that address confidentiality program okay. address is known to everybody. So that order says that respondents counsel, so that's Ms. Cotto, may serve Ms. Fowler by dropping off a copy of any documents at the Calais County Superior Court Clerk's Office who will hold those documents for Ms. Fowler. It is Ms. Fowler's responsibility to check with Calais County Superior Court Clerk's Office to see if there have any any documents have been left for her. So that's that's how we're working things right now. That's that's can't go on forever, uh, and so that's where the address confidentiality program comes into play. So until that an address is known and is being used, uh, this is the the process we're going to use. So that puts a, a, a responsibility on you, Ms. Fowler, to regular regularly check with the clerk's office for documents that. Uh, may have been served upon you. So that means I would suggest, you know, probably three times a week you're calling in to just double check to make sure. Your Honor, I would ask for an order then that says as soon as she gets the the PMB to note uh, to notify my office by USPS so that I have something to work with. Are you comfortable with that, Ms. Heller? Um, Your Honor, I would like to make sure that uh, if Ms. Cotto is providing an order for the court to sign on that, that I be allowed to look at it first because there's a history of these hidden affirmations of counsel extorting money from me for bar complaints and cooperating with the DOJ. Sure, you can, so, yeah, we can, yeah, I just want to just, at least in principle, just get your input as if, are you comfortable as soon as you get that new address of notifying via the, the post, post office mail to Ms. Cotto of that new address? Yes, Your Honor, I am. Okay. Then we can, Ms. Cotto, um, I'm assuming she'd be willing to draft that, that order related to that, and we could come back on the 20th uh, or the 27th. Um, any preference when we come back for the presentation on that order? Um, 
the 20th, I can get it over to the clerk's office today or tomorrow and Ms. Fowler can pick it up. So I, I'd rather have it sooner than later. I would also ask for further rulings. The court was going to make some rulings on Ms. Fowler's uh, failure to provide the documentation. And I would ask the court to rule on that or does the court want to wait until the 20th? I could include whatever the court orders today on that that order for the 20th if we do it today. Okay. All right. So um, so I am okay if we set the matter over for presentation to June 20th. That's so one week from today. So Ms. Cotto is going to submit that document either to, today or tomorrow to the clerk's office. Then Ms. Fowler, it'd be your responsibility to go to the clerk's office and get a copy of that. And then you could submit any objections that you would like uh, based on that proposed order. Then the, the second issue related to that presentation docket is um, um, it, it can be added to that, that order that there has been a failure to comply with the order to compel um, and that there has been no further or no, no further since the date, since the int date of uh, the motion on May 16th to the hearing date today, there's been no uh, further uh, submission of, of discovery by Ms. Fowler to Ms. Cotto. Um, Your Honor, I do have one thing that I'm extremely confused on. Sure. Um, <clears throat> it is my impression that uh, these proceedings um, are my, I, I started the child support proceedings um, and I'm extremely confused as the, to how the non-custodial parent can continue to show up demand all my information and then refuse a modification of support to the court and continue doing this for the last five years. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a good question. It's a good move. question. Yeah, it's, it's a good question you raised, Ms. Fowler. Uh, you know, anytime one party wants something and they're asking for relief, right? They're asking for something that the court, they want the court to order. Uh, just as you want to know, basically, you know, the foundation of, you know, moving forward of all the information that you can get that would help you make a good decision on that. The other party is in the, a similar position. So they want to make sure that they have as much information they can to make a good, a good decision. That also aids the court when there's good free flow of information from one party to the other and vice versa. Uh, that's when we get the most full, uh, full view of the situation and the most, most information possible. So that's why the discovery rules are there. That allows each party to dig in and get the best information that they can and then present that to the court. Uh, so that's well, kind of the reason why, even though you started started this uh, modification for the child support thing, that's why the, the other party gets to dig in and, and look at things also. So that's just kind of the way the, the system is set up. Hope that I helps. I think what I was saying, Your Honor, is um, I, we've already done this process once before and all my information was provided and we got as far as to the final hearing to modify and they requested that it not be granted and then proceeded to use my information in all these abusive ways and then proceeded to continue to do it for several years after and proceed to force me into court to modify under the guise of modification again, deny me moving uh, when I had a, a job offer with the $50,000 contract and uh, the courts allowed them to continue to abuse in this manner and harm my child and financially extort me. Okay. All right. So, um, so I don't think we're going to resolve that, that particular issue today um, as far as any uh, un clear understanding uh, of that issue. So, Ms. Cotto, do you have enough uh, guidance as far as Sorry. preparation of an order? I, I just, um, is the court going to, go, all I have at this point is there's a uh, failure to comply and no discovery has been provided since 516 mm -hmm. hearing. So is the court making any other rulings in regards to the discovery? Because I'm still needing the discovery and I can't seem to get it. So one of the things I would be requesting is further sanctions or um, you know, Ms. Fowler needs to provide the information because I cannot get it. Right. Ms. Fowler, when do you, when do you think is a, there's, so there's those discovery requests and as a case drags on, if you will, 
things change, right? Or people believe that, you know, there's cost of living adjustments and things uh, happen, people's incomes increase or de decrease. And so there's this, the rule requires for uh, all parties to seasonably update information. Uh, so that's basically what we're looking at is that there's these discovery requests that are outstanding and the court is looking is has made an order that you comply with those. And that there was a indication that uh, Ms. Cotto, if she didn't get the information as ordered, she would be asking for additional sanctions up to and including dismissal of, of, of the case. So there's a strong incentive on your part to comply with the court order. Uh, so I'll just ask you, uh, what, what plans do you have to comply with the, the discovery order, the order to compel uh, to, to respond to the discovery? Well, Your Honor, as I said, I, I planned on filing an appeal or at the very least a recusal of Ms. Cotto. Um, that would absolutely resolve a lot of issues because there's some hidden agendas being put in this um, where she asserts her own self as a witness and demands fees for things, which is very confusing to me because I don't see how it's ethical for her to be a witness and an advocate, but apparently she does. She is seems there, to do whatever she wants. Ms. Fowler, um, is there is there a time frame that you believe by which you'll be able to supply all that information? I I would say probably three weeks would give me enough time to file the paperwork that I need to file. And uh, does that mean you're filing dis responses to this discovery? Because that's what I'm I looking for. I will be filing responses um, to Ms. Cotto's filings. And so let, me, let me be more specific with you, Ms. Fowler. Do you intend to comply with the court's order that compels you to provide discovery answers? I intend to comply with it when I'm not dealing with someone who intends to use it to harm. Okay, I'll set a two week deadline. Uh, you will need to supply all answers to Ms. Cotto by June 27th. That if you don't, we will be here on June 27th. And one of the remedies that I could employ is dismissal of all your claims. So uh, think very carefully and cautiously about how you approach that response to providing discovery responses, because that's the court's order. It's not Ms. Cotto that's asking for that. That's the court that's ordered you to comply. Of course, you can file an appeal. That doesn't stop the court from taking any action now. Of course, you can file any matters uh, for recusal. That doesn't stop the court from taking action. The court ordered you to provide those answers today. The court is extending you some additional grace and time to comply with the court's order. You'll need to comply fully with the court's order by June 27th. We'll be here on June 27th and we'll review uh, your answers to the discovery and hopefully that they're complete and we can avoid any sanctions. Your Honor, um, we'd also ask for additional fees for having to appear today because there's still nothing. $250 of attorney fees is awarded. And if I could just feedback, the court is ordering also that in within by June 27th, Ms. Fowler will supply to my office all, uh, all answers to discovery, all answers uh, completed to discovery, correct? Correct. Per, per okay. the order to compel. Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Fowler. I, yes, Ms. Fowler. I, I would ask that the language not be specifically to her office because, as I said, I am filing motions, but I will provide information to the other party. So I don't know if, what the distinction there is, Ms. Fowler, because if you give it to the other party, then the other party gives it to Ms. Cotto. Um, what's the difference? The difference is, is to the question of whether or not Ms. Cotto will be continuing on in these actions as acting counsel, given the history that has gone on. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll deny that request. Uh, it's to be provided to Ms. Cotto's office. Okay. I will uh, write an order and provide a copy to Ms. Fowler via the clerk's office unless I have the address by today or tomorrow, and then we'll be back on the 20th for presentation. Great. Uh, so we'll see everybody on June 20th for the presentation from today's proceedings, and we'll also be here on the 27th to review 
uh, but are hoped for complete answers to the discovery and we can avoid any sanctions. That'll complete okay. today's hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. And Ms. Ms. Looney, are, are, you, are you available? I am, Your Honor. Great. Thank you. We're, we're here on the matter of, of Fowler v. Reed, causes 18.3.672-08. Uh, we're on today for a, a presentation. Uh, back on uh, June thirteenth, we had we held a review related to uh, discovery and the like, and we set it over for to uh, today for a presentation of the order. There was a proposed order submitted by Ms. Cotto um, back on looks like it was filed on June thirteenth, and it uh, imposes attorney fees of two hundred fifty dollars. And it indicates that there is a failure of Ms. Fowler to comply with the court's oral ruling on May 16th and the written order to compel on June 6th to provide discovery. And that there, when we reviewed uh, things back on the 13th, uh, there was uh, Ms. Fowler had not yet provided any further discovery. And that had happened, not happened since May 16th. And then it goes on to read that uh, Ms. Fowler needs to provide to Ms. Cotto, her address under the Washington State Address Confidentiality Program as soon as she receives that information. Um, and that until Ms. Cotto receives that address information, Ms. Fowler would, would be served through the Calais County Superior Court Clerk's Office. And that Ms. Fowler has the responsibility to check with the clerk's office for any documents or filings submitted by Ms. Cotto on behalf of her client. Goes on to read that Ms. Fowler uh, shall provide full and complete answers to the discovery requests, including all attachments and documents by June 27th. And the respondent is awarded $250 in attorney fees and is set for presentation on June 20th. And the court would review discovery answers on June 27th and would then further consider sanctions if the request of discovery is not provided and is incomplete. Ms. Fowler, did you get a copy of that proposed order? No, Your Honor, I did not. And I, I, don't know if the state or um, anyone else was provided that either. Your Honor, I provided a copy to the clerk's office as per the order the same day I filed it, since I did not have an address to provide it to. Um, I did not give a copy to the state as it really didn't, um, it wasn't something that involved the state. Um, I believe though I may have scanned and emailed it I don't recall. Okay, and Ms. Fowler, did you did you go to the clerk's office to receive that and pick up that document? It is not in uh, the clerk's noting for service. There's no service indicated. So did I you come to the clerk's office to retrieve that document. Um. I, I have not because I have not seen anything in the filings that there was service of any kind. So as we indicated a couple of times, uh, just given the current situation until the address confidential program address it becomes available and known, until that time, uh, there's an order that you're to be, you can be served by Ms. Cotto dropping off a copy at the clerk's office and that's incumbent upon Ms. Fowler, it's her responsibility to check with the clerk's office frequently to see if there's documents that have been uh, ready for her to, to pick up. Um, so if there's been a failure of Ms. Fowler to do that, uh, and if Ms. Cotto's indicated that she, she has filed it, which the proposed order was filed, uh, then Ms. Fowler, uh, that's, that's your responsibility to, to follow through. And it sounds like you didn't, didn't do that. Your Honor, that order was actually filed. And then I left a copy for Ms. Fowler on the exact same day we did it. Uh, that we were before the court was the 13th. And so, Ms. Feller, at the beginning of the <clears throat> hearing, I reviewed that proposed order, that the contents of it. I, I'm not sure if that would be helpful if I were to review it again, so you know the, the substance of that order. I don't, I don't see any uh, service in Odyssey, and generally the clerk uh, does note service has been performed in Odyssey, um, when documents are delivered for me and I'm able to see that and I call the, the court and I pick up the documents. Would you like me to review that order for you now so you know the substance of it? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'll read it in its entirety so you know what it says. Judgment creditor, Corey Reed, judgment debtor, 
Jolene Fowler, attorney fees, $250. Um, attorney fees shall bear interest at 12% per annum. Attorney for judgment creditor, Eleanor M. Cotto. Attorney for judgment debtor, pro se. End of summary. Number two, basis. This matter having come before the Honorable Michael H. Evans on June 13, 2023, on court's review of compliance with motion to compel entered on June 6, 2023, the respondent appearing by and through his attorney, Eleanor M. Cotto, and the petitioner appearing pro se. Court having reviewed the records and hearing argument from the parties, the court makes the following finding. Number one, petitioner Jolene Fowler failed to comply with the oral ruling made on May 16, 2023 and the, and the written order to compel on June 6, 2023 by providing the discovery request to respondent's attorney. Number two, petitioner Jolene Fowler has not provided any further submission of discovery since May 16, 2023. Now, therefore, number three, order. It is hereby ordered, adjudged, and decreed, number one, Petitioner Jolene Fowler shall provide Respondents Council, Eleanor M. Cotto, with her address under the Washington State Address Confidentiality Program as soon as she receives this information through the service requirement as set forth in the June 6, 2023 order. Number two, until Respondents Council receives the above address information, Petitioner Jolene Fowler will be served through the Cowlitz County Superior Court Clerk's Office and it will be Petitioner Jolene Fowler's responsibility to check with the Callas County Superior Court Clerk's Office for any documents or filings submitted by Respondents Council for Petitioner. Number three, Petitioner Jolene Fowler shall provide full and complete answers to Respondents Discovery Request, including all requested attachments and documents by June 27, 2023. Number four, Respondent is awarded an additional $250 in attorney fees as set forth in the judgment section of this order. Number five, the, the presentation of this order is set is on for June 20, 2023 at 9 a.m. Number six, the court shall review the status of the discovery answers on June 27, 2023, and shall consider further sanctions if the requested discovery is not provided and is or complete. There's a place for a date, place, place for signature uh, for myself. So uh, any questions on that proposed order, Ms. Feller? Uh, one question that I have is uh, I'm confused as to how the judgment creditor is uh, listed as Eleanor Cotto because um, the other party is Corey Reed, not Eleanor Cotto. Yeah, good question. Yeah, the judgment creditor is listed as Corey Reed. And then it just says the attorney for the judgment creditor is Eleanor M. Cotto. So yeah, you're right. It says judgment creditor is Corey Reed, not, not Ms. Cotto. Do you have any other questions? Uh, the other question that I have is relating to uh, discovery. Um, some of the items that Miss Cotto's asking for, I, I'm being told by uh, the administration um, for Social Security and then the federal government that they have already provided them answers. And I'm, I have no authority to override administrative rules. So Ms. Feller, let me just, just pause if, if we could. I, I wanna just stay focused on this proposed order uh, that we just I just read to you. It, it sounds like you don't have any other questions about that. Is, is that accurate? Regarding the um, order, uh, as far as I'm aware, it has been ordered that I'm not to cooperate with state and federal agencies or I will be sanctioned payable to Eleanor Cotto. Um, I am ordered to provide information so that they can further use it um, to seek funds for using my daughter. Um, I am ordered um, to provide an address through the confidentiality program when it's available to me. Um, so Eleanor Cotto can serve me for another client she has um, and start her proceedings uh, with another case she has. I, uh, that is my understanding. So the order that I read to you, the proposed order, 
<clears throat> do you have any objection to it? Meaning, did it get anything wrong that the court ordered? Um, is, it, is, it, is it an accurate summary of what the court ordered? And I'd be happy to, to review it again if you have any questions on any particular provisions. I, I'm aware that the, the court ordered me to pay sanctions. Um, and I believe that the order language um, is somewhat correct to what the court ordered. Okay. And are there any specific things that I read that you're, you're objecting to that you feel are, are not an accurate portrayal of what the court ordered? I, I'm aware that that is, is what you ordered, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So um, that order uh, is will be, be signed as presented. And so then we have the review uh, for June 27th, a week from today, related to the discovery. Um, so we'll review the discovery answers that have been propounded uh, that Ms. Fowler uh, has a, a duty to respond to. So we'll review that on June 27th at 9 a.m. Any questions? And my apologies to all parties for the delay. Juvenile was backed up. Thanks. All right, Ms. Benny, do you have any questions or issues? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Fowler, any questions uh, related to today's activities and next week's review? Uh the only thing that I wanted to make sure was that uh, the state was served uh, all current income uh, information for Mr. Reed uh, as well, because I do believe he was, I, I believe he was just recently married um, and he has several changes and stuff that relate to support as well. Your Honor, I will comply with any discovery request by the state and I will provide the information as requested. So I don't believe that's properly before the court. Okay, yeah, discovery is ongoing. There's, each party has a duty if there's changes to seasonably update and provide updated discovery to the other, other party. So I'll trust that the parties will rely on the, the, the rules of civil procedure related to um, the civil rules related to discovery. So we'll see everybody next week, June 27th, 9 a.m. Let's um, move, let's see, one moment. Let's move to the Jolene Fowler and Corey Reed matter. This is, pardon me, 18367208. I'll double check. Uh, Ms. Fowler, can you hear me okay? Let's see, it looks like it's uh, your microphone's now muted. Ms. So if you want to unmute and try again. All right, Ms. Fowler, can you hear me? Yes, Your Honor. All right, great. I can hear you. And uh, Ms. Cotto, can you hear me? I can. Very good. And I'll just double check in if Corey Reed is present. He won't be, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we're here today to review uh, compliance with the discovery order. Um, and uh, if not, then there would take, be taking a look at possible additional sanctions. So I'll, I'll hear from Ms. Cotto first, and then we'll hear from Ms. Fowler. Your Honor, I have not received anything. Okay. All right, Ms. Fowler, have you have you submitted any additional discovery to to Ms. Cotto? Your Honor, um, my daughter's dad had called me last night, and I had spoke with him about um, child care um, nanny options, um, and we were going to sit down and go through the three um, that I had found. Um, an interview with them um, because of the um, work hours that I generally would work. Um, normal daycare isn't really a vi viable option because of the fact that I would be getting called all day and all night um, being on call 24 seven. So, Miller, can I ask you a quick question? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, 
so you're talking about um, daycare or care for the child, and but what I'm I'm hoping we can discuss today is that there were two orders. There was uh, a June 6th and a June 16th order that compelled, uh, that ordered you to provide production or to provide discovery to Ms. Cotto. So that's what I was hoping to hear, hear from you about. Ms. Ms. Cotto indicated that since the entry of those orders, she, she hasn't received any additional discovery from you. So that's, and I wanted to hear from you what, what, what's happening there. Part of that is childcare. Uh, she was requesting information about the providers, their numbers, and um, they had a request to pay by the 15th. And going forward, that's something that I would have to ask those providers. And then I'm also being told that I am possibly going to have to set up an account um, for payroll for them because I have to file taxes with the IRS as if they're an employee and um, private nannies are not cheap. They are, each of them charge anywhere between 18 and $20 an hour. Your Honor, um, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. We're yeah. only here, I, I'm an object. We're only here before the court regarding my discovery request, not this nanny issue or any other reason. So I would ask the court to limit the answers to whether or not she provided discovery. Yeah, and so so I apologize, Ms. Ms. Fowler. So I'm trying to, to kind of focus in on the issues is that, you know, if you have information related to child care providers and phone numbers and like, that information has to go to Ms. Cotto. That's what we're kind of talking about with the discovery is that information that you have that relates to the case uh, and needs to be shared between the parties. And that's what I'm conveying, Your Honor. If did you, that did you supply that of, to Ms. Cotto? I have not been able to supply that yet because I have to sit down and interview with the three of them. And then there's an, another issue because I'm being denied my right to work. Um, being able to come down to Cowlitz County and provide information to Miss Cotto. And it, it's my understanding that Miss Cotto doesn't even have permission to proceed in these, these ongoing issues. Um, as the, she has several clients in which Mr. Reed owes money and there's ongoing issues there. So we're not gonna uh, discuss whether uh, Miss Cotto has standing to represent her client in, in, this, in this case, she does. She's licensed and uh, there's no issues preventing her from representing her client. Uh, what other information do you, uh, are you required to give to Ms. Cotto that you have not? Your Honor, I haven't received any financial information at all. And I haven't received any printout from Social Security because mother is the protective payee. I haven't gotten anything on the, from the discovery list that I provided. All she sends me is stuff I had filed. That's not what I need. Okay. So Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Fowler, do you have uh, any financial information that you're ready to turn over to Ms. Cotto, the, the social security payout sheet, anything of that nature? I had filed um, what I had been sent by social security and she has told the court that they had went in and asked for uh, information and they made an administrative ruling because of how their they have rules about how they can pay and then they have rules about basically everything they do there they have asked for information about banking accounts and such and social security has told them no that's protected information Right. That's where uh, you come into play. That's where you come into play, Ms. Fowler. That's where you have the I documents. Can't they're, your, they're your records. They're your records and you have access to them. Mr. Reed had the bank account in his name and the court okay. ruled that he got to keep the social security funds, even though I'm the rep payee. Right. And so, so you're the, you're the, the payee. Is that, is that my understanding? I, I was named the rep payee because Corey was denied. He Okay. I tried to set up an account through USAA and I told him it had to be a representative payee account. 
Well, they said they needed to speak to Corey because he's a veteran and they had to make sure that our daughter was eligible. Mm -hmm. Somehow between them calling him while he was playing Magic the Gathering at his banker friend's house and them coming back to me while I was on the phone at home, they ended up making the account with him on it and my daughter and putting the social security funds in that account. And the court said that he gets to keep it. And I have a letter from USAA saying, I have no access to that account. Your Honor, one of the problems has been the funds are not being deposited anymore into this USAA account. The funds are deposited somewhere. So that's why I specifically limited my information. And I keep asking and I cannot get the protective payee because they have a list of the printouts. So I don't know what she's talking I about. Administrate. If I could finish. Go ahead. Um, and so I can't get, I wanted to know very specific information about all the bank accounts on the child's names. I am not asking for the USA. USAA accounts because that's not where the money's being deposited. And we do this every time we come to court. She's the protective payee. She can get a printout. She won't provide it. It's real simple. Okay. Ms. Fowler, can you get your hands on the the, the uh, account information and the account uh, that where the money's going and support that onto Ms. Cotto? I can't be a protective payee of an account where Mr. Reed received over six thousand dollars for I our think, child. I think we're security. talking about a different different account now. So the monies are coming in to, uh, to, uh, to for the child's benefit. Is that correct? Money was to be awarded to Anastasia in two thousand and eighteen that money went into a USAA account. I told Social Security what happened. Mr. Reed was not supposed to have any access to the funds whatsoever, but the court allowed him to go ahead and use my name and keep the money and take credit for the funds at the same time. So, so after, that. I can't use my, ma my name to be a payee and give him credit for a benefit. I, I can't do that. Okay, so let's fast forward to 2023 or 2022. Are, are there funds being received for benefit of the child? There's supposed to be funds being received for her. Mr. Reed receives VA funds for her too. And he told the court, well, it doesn't say okay. I have to give it to her. Okay. Your Honor, she gets a 1099 at the end of every year because the protective pay, if she could disclose that, that would be greatly appreciated. She is the only one that can get a printout from Social Security in regards to the child, but she won't even answer that. All she does is get this long diatribe about everything other than what I need to know. Uh, I'm asking the court for further sanctions because she hasn't provided anything. We get before the court each and every time and we go through this whole thing that she says she can't get it. She can't. And I'd like her, uh, I, I would like further sanctions and I want to move on so that we can get this case done. Ms. Fowler, do you have the 1099 from 2022? No. You never received a 1099 document from the IRS or from any, any entity related to any, fine, any monies received? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. All right. Any additional information, Ms. Cotto, that you're that has not that you've asked for is but has not yet been disclosed or shared? Well, she hasn't provided anything and nothing's under the penalty of perjury, which would be useful in trial. So uh, again, um, I'm asking that the court further sanction her and order her to provide the information and at least provide the the uh, the answers under the penalty of perjury. Ms. Fowler, do you have any, any response to that? Or, or is that something you'd be able to do as far as providing your answers under the penalty of perjury? Because it sounds like you've provided some answers in the past, but they just weren't under the penalty of perjury. No. Maybe if you haven't submitted anything, but would you can you answer those questions under the penalty of perjury and submit those to Ms. Cotto? Your Honor, like as I've told the court, we've already done this whole uh, modification that I actually did previously 
And so, Ms. I, Ms. Fellow, I, I'm going to cut you I, off there. It's just a simple yes or no question. Are you willing, I, yes or no, to provide answers to the discovery request to Ms. Cotto under the penalty of perjury? Yes or no? Yes, although I'd prefer not to go to court anymore. Because okay, so it, that's what we're I'm here today to do. And we're reviewing whether you've done that or not. And so, um, Ms. Feller, I want to make sure that you're clear on what, what I'm asking is that uh, those answers to the discovery request that Ms. Cotto uh, provided to you, they have to be under be made under the penalty of perjury. If you haven't done that, um, I'm inclined to sanction you, and, but I want to, uh, to avoid that if I can, uh, because the goal here is not to uh, sanction you. The goal here is to have the information shared in the proper format. So if you're willing to do that, can you have that done today? They're supplied to Ms. Cotto today? Can you have them completed today and then supplied to Ms. Cotto uh, you know, put it in the mail or however you're doing, however you're sharing that information. I, I, I'm having financial stress. I, I'm on TANF for God's sake. How does being on TANF and having financial stress, how does that in, in, interfere with your ability to benefit. answer questions Why under the I penalty of perjury? Ms. Fowler, did you hear my question? I can repeat it if you'd like. Recognizing that financial stress is there, recognizing that you're on TANF, how does that interfere with your ability to provide answers under the penalty of perjury? Because I don't even have money to print anything. My God, it costs me money every time I go to print things just to supply it. Do you have a, a friend you could ask that has a paper and you could use your best handwriting and write it out in, in handwriting? I live several hours away and I don't have access to any of that stuff. You don't have paper, court, access to paper? The court doesn't even Ms. listen Allard, do you have access to paper? Anyway, the Ms. Allard, do you have access to paper? Found that I've been being discriminated Ms. Fowler, against. Ms. Fowler, do, Ms. Fowler, do you have access to paper? I have access to paper. Do you have access to a pen? And a pen. Can you can you use that access to a pen and paper to write down the answers under the penalty of perjury today? I can write down answers. Under the penalty of perjury? Yes. And submit them to Ms. Cotto? I, I can try to mail them. Your Honor, uh, one of the things that I did ask for is a production of certain documents. Okay. I understand that there are financial issues uh, for Ms. Fowler. Um, if she can put them in a thumb drive and have them dropped off, I can print them myself. She cannot come by my office, though. She's prohibited from being on the property. But she's always found a way to serve me with documents and have people bring them by. So there's no reason why that can't happen. Well, when you even rip me off on court orders and supply uh, a satisfaction of judgment saying, well, well we I, never I'm paid, ask but it spoke volumes stop? for my client. Because I mean, we're... how can I even trust a single thing you say? So so ad addressing addressing the issue of the finances and the concerns that you related to your finances, is it something that you could uh, send electronically so you don't have to print out no. a bunch of papers? No, I would rather not because a miss. Kodo comes up with all these crazy things, um, including putting a uh, straining order on me uh, and have her clients come rummage through my grocery cart in a grocery store, but wants a restraining order on me and all kinds of crazy things. So she specifically requested I don't email her and I would like to abide by that. Okay, so I, I think what I'm going to do here is that I want to have a clear picture of what exactly has been requested. It sounds like nothing, no additional information has been provided. So I'm going to impose $1,000 of sanctions. And Ms. Fowler, you can you can remove that that thousand dollars of sanctions uh, if you provide discovery answers uh, to uh, everything that Ms. Cotto has asked for. 
Um, Ms. Cotto is going to supply you a list of via, she's going to submit it to the clerk's office and you'll get your hands on that list of the specific items that, sh that uh, she's requesting. And then you will have opportunity to review that. And uh, then we'll review this in three weeks. And that will be on today being the 27th of June. We will be here on July 18th to make sure that you've uh, supplied all that information. And if you have, then the thousand dollars goes away. If you haven't, then it stays. Do you have any questions? I I think the one question, it's not really a question, but I mean, if I was able to actually participate uh, in court proceedings instead of um, I going somewhere where I'm hours away um that might resolve a lot of the issue and i mean honestly child support enforcement this is their job to do and i don't understand why miss Cotto seems to want to keep going with it instead of letting child support enforcement do all this stuff that's what they're there for Okay, uh, so it sounds like that was a statement as opposed to a question. So it sounds like there's no questions. So Ms. Cota will supply a list to the, she'll file that and supply that to the uh, clerk's office and you can make arrangements to get your hands on that. And then uh, you can go ahead and get busy in uh, supplying the information, uh, you know, the answers under penalty of perjury and any documents that uh, Ms. Cota has requested. She'll need to have those before the 18th. So when we're here on the 18th of July, we can review to see how you've done. And the hope is that you've supplied everything and so that thousand dollars can go away. Otherwise it will stick. Just for, uh, question quickly, Your Honor, a couple of questions. Um, I'll give her another discovery request and highlight specifically because I've narrowed all my requests, um, but I need to do another order and um, I'll put that in, in with that. If we could put that on for a quick uh, presentation, maybe two weeks. Your Honor, I think That's I've been denied child support for five years, and I think Your Honor, this we're not here for that. No, and the court no. just give uh, give me I've a date for presentation to her of the order, and she just wants to keep going with it. And so I would request to deny these additional discovery requests because she has no intention of she do, never even had the intention of paying the one simple. Uh, order that she had to pay. She wouldn't even pay that. She has no intention of paying support. Neither does her client. Her client doesn't even have an interest in seeing my child. Okay. Your Honor, what date, so, date for the presentation? So um, there's basically, I, I've made a ruling today related to discovery. So that's what Ms. Cotto's addressing is that she's going to put that into a, a order format. And then uh, she's going to provide a copy of that to you, Ms. Fowler via the clerk's office and we'll be here on July 11th to re to review and, and sign off on that docket and have everybody an opportunity to chime in. So that will be at nine o'clock. And then on July 18th, we will be here to see if the discovery answers are complete and whether the thousand dollar sticks or goes away. So we'll see everybody on those two dates. Thank you, Your Honor. So Just she's not... She's not saying that she's doing additional discovery because that's what it just sounded like she said. Well, it's interesting. She's going to provide you with a list of the discovery questions that she's asked in the past. And then there's also a duty upon all parties in a, in a civil case, which this is, to provide updated information. So even though you may have given information in the past, you have to update that and provide fresh new information if there's been changes. So well, she'll provide that list to you and then you can respond to that. Oh, we're done for today. I think I've been fairly clear and generous with the, the order today. So we're complete for date for the review of the completion of the discovery request. And my hope is that it's all there and we don't have to impose that $1,000. Thank you. Thank, we're done thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, did the court have a chance to review um, a document I submitted to um, it went into Judge Evans's email because it's a photo exhibit and I can't file it. Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, so we're here before the court in regards to discovery. This is a joke. 
I can't even read the discovery that was given. It's like done with either color crayon or pencil. Um, I, I can't read half of it. This is not in keeping with the order of the court. I would. I don't know if the court wants to have Judge Evans review this, but I I can't use this discovery. I can't even read half the words on it. Um, I never had, you know what Excuse me. Uh, I'd ask Ms. Fowler if she has anything to say. Your Honor, I complied with the court's order. The okay, Ms. Fowler. Judge Evans ordered me to take. Ms. Fowler. Uh, Ms. Fowler. We're not even going to go there. I saw what you submitted. I don't know if you think you're being clever or funny, uh, but that's in no way, shape, or form compliance with the discovery requirements. So the order was that you were to pay $1,000 in fees unless you did comply with discovery. So you owe that $1,000 in fees. I'm putting this on in two weeks, August 1. If you have not submitted proper discovery answers, it's going to be another thousand dollars in fees. If you want to continue to play whatever game you think you are playing, just be aware it's going to cost you a bunch of money. The other thing that will probably happen is if you continue along this path, is your pleadings are going to get stricken and Mr. Uh, Reed mm -hmm. get pretty much what he wants. Is there any part of that you don't understand? The only question I have is I was ordered by the court to take pen and paper or whatever I had to write and respond to discovery. And I did. Oh, I did what I was told. As I say, I don't know if you thought you were being clever, but that is in no way, shape, or form compliance with discovery. If you can't figure out how to comply with discovery, I suggest you talk to an attorney or contact the legal aid program. But it's obvious that you thought you were being clever or funny with this. And I'm just not going to put up with it. And there's no reason Ms. Cotto should either. So well, August 1, 9 o'clock is your deadline. It's going to cost you more money if you continue to pull what you think uh, is the same stunt. Is that clear? To you? Yes, Your Honor. It's clear to me Mr. Reed's gotten his way this entire time. That will be all. Okay, I will uh, submit an order. It looks like, and it's difficult for me to read, but Ms. Fowler has the um, confidential address program, but I can't read the P.O. box number. Could she please provide that on the record so that I can mail her the proposed order? What's the P.O. box number, ma'am? <clears throat> Pulling my prime and uh, domestic violence card right now. Um, it is. Keep in mind, um, those are screened and the ones that are forwarded do take several weeks to get to me because it is going through a rerouting program if it passes through the screener. All right, well, I suggest you get your discovery to Ms. Cotto's office right away. Thank you, Your Honor. I will prepare a proposed order also and have that ready for presentation on the first. All right. That Thank will... you. There um, we have Ms. Cotto uh, joins us on the line and then Ms. Fowler, are you on the line, Jolene Fowler? I don't see her. She wasn't here earlier when I called the case. Um, any communication, uh, Ms. Cotto, for Ms. Fowler today about her appearance? Or? No, she did serve me with um, some answers. They're incomplete. I don't know if the court, um, Judge Warning made a uh, an order, so yeah. I did not submit an order to this court because I've got to go through the gyrations of getting it heard before him. So my question for the court is, do I... Would it be easier just to have him review it when I have him do the presentation or? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, the, the order, he, he imposed a thousand dollars of attorney fees and basically said that if you, you don't get the illegible stuff to, to Ms. Cotto and have complete answers, then you'll likely be facing another thousand dollar attorney fee imposition. Um, I, there was a lot of answers, Your Honor, that were incomplete or she did not date it. Um, it wasn't pen this time instead of color crayon or um 
a colored pencil, which was a little easier to, it was easier to read. Um, the only problem was er, a, a lot of the request for reductions is I've already submitted it and she has not. So I don't know how the court wants to deal with that. Um, even if she submitted it in previous filings, when you ask for it in discovery, it needs to be included in discovery. It was not. Um, I have only gotten what I filed and just regurgitation of uh, my previous filing. So in the respect that she didn't answer a lot of the questions, but she's now in the confidential um, program. So she doesn't have to answer that. And I'm not saying that's the part that's not answered. It was request for um, information in regards to the child social security. I can't get that. I can't even get the child social security number. So I would submit to the court and I don't know if the court wants a copy of what she answered, but she has not answered the questions. Yeah, I think from from the court's vantage point, uh, knowing what what was requested and what has been supplied, and, and if there's any shortfalls or incomplete answers, having that clear picture is really important uh, for the, for this court. Um, so, as far as the the prior prior order of Judge Warning, uh, I guess you could work on scheduling that and getting it scheduled in front of him on a presentation docket. Okay. Um, and then, as far as today's hearing, um, Ms. Fowler was given notice she was present at the last hearing that we would be reviewing it today and the possibility of additional uh, motivators, if you will, to, to comply uh, would be would be heard. And she's not here. I'll double check with the court clerk to see if she's maybe heard from uh, Ms. Fowler or had any contact or information from her. And, and Your Honor, one thing is she delivered these oh. at, late yesterday, so I wouldn't have been able to get anything to the court. Um, I'm looking at the time. It was um, mid-afternoon, I believe, is when I received it at my office. So I couldn't have gotten anything to your honor anyway um, by today. Okay. Yeah, and the document that I was handed, apparently this was filed last night, was uh, uh, Heritage Bank statements. I hope they're filed under sealed. Yeah, I don't know how they've been filed. Because these are my clients, my clients' bank statements um, is what she handed me was the bank statements. Yeah. So one of the things I would ask of the court is if they are not sealed to get, um, I would be more than happy to do the cover sheet, but I just don't want my client's bank account number floating around in general. Sure. Madam, Madam Clerk, if Ms. Cotto were to supply a, a cover sheet, I don't know if she, how that works. If she's not the one that filed them, if we can add a cover sheet and put them in a sealed without the request of the filer. Typically, we would contact Ms. Fowler and tell her that they need to be sealed. Okay. Um, but I can check this easily. Yeah. My preference would be that uh, that they would be sealed and that a cover sheet be provided by Ms. Cotto to the clerk's office. So uh, upon, a, hopefully we get that approval from Ms. Michael Bust, that uh, upon Ms. Cotto providing that cover sheet, that they would be sealed. Okay. That, that I appreciate that. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and so I think what I would like to do then with this is she hasn't complied, but I can supply the court with under sealed what she had. I'll just go through and see if anything needs to be sealed, but uh, supply the court with what she has supplied or la did not supply again. Okay. Um, so I'm going to assess attorney fees. Um, Ms. Ms. Cotto is present here today. I'll impose $250 of attorney fees for today's appearance. I'm not sure where Ms. Fowler is. Um, she was here last time. Um, I know she filed some new information that uh, she'll probably note up at some point, um, but that we're not hearing that today. Uh, so I actually, we were here on the 18th of July, it looks like. That's correct. In front of Judge Warning, Ms. Fowler filed stuff that actually has never been served on my office. So I only found it because I was looking to see if anything else had been served. Gotcha. Okay. Her file. Are you, so Ms. Cotto, proceeding, you know, for, for the next review hearing, um, since Ms. Fowler is not here, she's absented herself. And I, I don't know if she's, you know, ill or if she's, you know, in a hospital. I, I don't know. I don't know if she's choosing not to be here. Um, but I am imposing the $250 of attorney fees for, for to, that she needs to pay to Ms. Cotto's uh, or Mr. Fowler. Um, so the next steps, I guess, next steps is one, choose the date uh, to review the what's been filed and what's absent as far as the answers and then giving notice to Ms. Fowler. Uh, what I would suggest to the court is maybe uh, two weeks, I can get that out to Ms. Fowler because I have this confidential address. Okay. I'll get it out to her as soon as possible, along with uh, the proposed order. 
And what I'll prepare for the court is just, I will file the documents along with um, a uh, attorney statement as to what's miss what's necessary. There's a lot missing, but given the facts of this case, I'm not as concerned about that, but there's some stuff I'm very concerned about that I can't get. Okay. All right. So that, that sounds fine. Thank you for that. So we'll set this matter over to August 15th at 9 a.m. Ms. Cotto will will provide a, a, a docket notice to Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Reed and the corresponding documents related to the answers and affidavit supporting the same. And we'll see everybody.